Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vormithrax, or Vorm, and this is episode 6 of our Let's Play tutorial for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, the zombie survival roguelike game. Hope you've been enjoying the series so far. Yesterday we had a pretty successful first run into town, we looted our first residence, got some really great items out of it, made our way back towards home, and on the way we uh, watched some zombies play in a minefield and uh, managed to get our first zombie kill without getting infected, so that's always a great thing. Uh, we made it back to base, which is where we're at right now, and we got a plan on some things to do. We're in a bit of time pressure. If you look right here, this section of the window is an indicator of the day-night cycle. So this is the sun symbol, and if it was right in the center, that would be high noon. So we're a bit to the right of center, so it's probably, I want to say, 2 o'clock or so. It will get dark, obviously, as the time advances, and we've got a few things that I want to get done as early as possible. So with some of the raw materials we brought back and the items we looted, I want to get a few things built so we're ready to go for the night time. So let's get into it. Okay, what we're going to do first is I'm going to move some materials around. Now that I've got better carrying capacity, I'm going to start setting up what I consider my initial base area. I use this section of the base over here. One important reason why is when you're adjacent to the computer monitor, it has enough power to power the monitor up and it provides a slight glow to the spaces around it. This is important. You'll notice the lighting is cloudy in the space I'm standing in now. If I move one space away, it switches to very dark. As long as you're standing adjacent to that monitor and you haven't smashed or disassembled that computer, you have just enough light to craft by, to read books by, and so on. It'll be a little slower because the lighting conditions are poor, but you'll be able to work at night, so you won't have just a bunch of wasted time when you can't do anything during the evening. So it's a great initial spot. I recommend you don't ever do anything to that computer other than read that message. And uh, that's it. Just leave it there and use its light generating ability until you've got your own way of developing some light later. By that point, we'll probably be moving the base to a different location regardless. So we're going to use this area here as our centralized uh, storage spot for our crafting. We're going to get a lot of items accumulated in the game. I'm a pack rat, so I tend to pick up a lot of stuff, and you will too, because it's very necessary for your survival. Um, so I'm going to separate my inventory into various piles that I'm going to drop on the floor and the spaces around me, and I try to organize them in such a way that it's semi-coherent. I'll put tool items in one pile, food items in another pile, and so so on. So it's easy for me to find things. And also I can use the advanced inventory to search all the tiles around me in order to pick things up or move things around quickly. So you'll kind of see how things develop. So the first thing I want to build is a brazier. So when night falls it's going to get pretty cold and we don't have a lot of good clothing so we're going to need to do a couple of things. Um, we also need fire in order to cook food and be able to craft certain things. So it's going to be very important that we have a controlled source of fire. Now, I could just set the end of this counter on fire, but that would be very bad because it's going to be an uncontrolled wildfire, essentially. It's going to burn the whole building down. You've got to have some way of containing and keeping the fire from spreading, especially indoors. Don't ever set a fire indoors without some kind of uh, special way of containing the fire. So the easiest way to do that initially is to create a brazier. So if I open up the crafting window and it's in the other category and the list is pretty long now this is partly due to the skill levels that I've got in certain categories as well as the mods that I've got installed have added to the list so as you can see if I stay on this all uh, part of the column it's going to be a really big list alternatively I could use the arrow key to move over to just the tools listing and it shortened it a bit and you can see what's in these other sections. So tons and tons of things, and as you play and as you watch videos like this, you'll kind of get an idea of what the important things early are, and it'll take some time for you to kind of look down this list and find out what things you might want. But again, there is so much detail in this game and so much depth to the various systems that if you, like I said in the last episode, think in your head, what would I do or need if I were really in this situation? you're probably going to find it on this list and it'll do the things that you expect it to do or give you the advantages you expect it to give so what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to hit the shift F key to do a find and I know I'm looking for a brazier so we're going to select that 
And here we have Brazier selected, and we have a problem because it says in red we need one tool with hammering of two or more. Alright, so we're missing a tool with an attribute of hammering of two. We can fix that, and then in green it shows the components required, two sheet metals. This is why I disassembled the stove back in that house that we looted, because it provides a good source of sheet metals. So we've got those in our inventory or near enough to us to be able to craft it, we just need the tool. Alright, so how do we get a hammering tool? Well, if we hit R to reset the list, and then we go find hammer, we've got two options at this point in the game at least. We've got a makeshift hammer recipe we can build and we've got a stone hammer recipe we can build. Both of them are in completely green conditions and they're lit up so that tells us that we've got the raw materials and the skills available to build them. The stone hammer is zero difficulty so very easy to make at our skill level of two. Only takes a few minutes to build and the components it requires is a 2x4 or a heavy stick, a rock, and 40 thread. Remember that thread that we built earlier when we disassembled those uh, curtains and rags? That's one of the reasons we did that. The makeshift hammer is similar, but it switches up for the chunk of steel or lump of steel. But it's going to have the exact same statistics. So we've got hammering of two and fine hammering of one. Hammering of two, fine hammering of one. So I don't really care which we use in this particular circumstance for this early kind of tool. It's not going to make any difference. This is the only thing I'm going to use it for is uh, manufacturing and crafting. So whatever we think we've got more of. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the stone hammer. So rocks are easy to come by. So we're just going to hit enter. And it says I can't see to craft. Ah, that's right, I forgot. So we're going to open this window. Make sure there's nothing out there that we need to worry about. Looks like we're clear. And then we're going to do this again. Find hammer. Alright, stone hammer. Craft the stone hammer from memory. There's no room in your inventory for the stone hammer, so you drop it. That happened because I'm full up, so it just dropped it in the space I was standing in. That's not a problem. We're going to unload some inventory right now, actually. So I'm going to say Shift D to drop. And I'm going to drop things to my left. We're going to make this our tools pile. So we're going to drop... We don't need all these matchbooks with us. We'll just take the lighter, which we won't need that many uses of out and about. So we'll just leave the lighter with nine. Um, we'll drop the pot here. We'll drop the rubber hose here. And that's all in the tools category. I'm also going to drop in this space here are general raw materials for building things that's going to be our sheet metal and pretty much everything in this category so i've got pluses next to all those items i hit enter and everything just got dropped right here which you can see here if i just point at it now if that list gets too long to show on the screen at once it'll have like a dot 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 or continued message at the bottom um, and you can manually look at that space to see all the items that are there, or you can use other methods. Alright, so now we've got some volume freed up and some weight available, but we're not done dropping things yet. I'm also going to drop our jar of pickled veggies. Actually, let's hold off on that. I'm going to do something else with that in just a second. Alright, the charcoal smoker. We also need to drop that. Um, we're going to deploy that eventually in a location, but for now we'll just drop that right there as well. If you're curious what shows on a list, whatever the last thing dropped is going to be the icon that shows. So if you have a preference or you want to help yourself remember what the piles represent, you can just drop specific items last and that will make that icon on top and make it easier to find what you're looking for or what category of items. All right. So now we've got a pretty good amount of space. These are things that I'm going to be carrying around with me semi-permanently. Let's take care of another problem while we're here. So while we were looting, we found a pair of socks that fit. I've already got a pair of socks that I'm wearing over here that fits, so I don't need this second pair for now. We're going to find more of these later, so let's do something else that's more useful with them. If we look at our inventories or our character screen, remember we've got these red conditions over here and we've been having a problem with our chilly hands, Well, that's going to get even worse if we're out and about in the nighttime. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some gloves for our hands. To do that, we're going to go back to the crafting menu and we're going to move the tab with or move the uh, tabs across the top with the tab key to the armor category. 
You can see the only two things that are lit up are a pair of sock mitts, which requires a pair of socks, or a blindfold. Why would you want a blindfold, you say? Eh, there are fun in-game reasons that you might need a blindfold. Um, sleep and the ability to get to sleep is actually something modeled in the game, and there are reasons why you may have a problem getting to sleep, or you just flat out can't sleep when you want to, and that can be an issue. So occasionally it might be that it's too bright where you're trying to sleep, and you need to put a blindfold on to block out the light uh, so that you can actually sleep in a brightly lit area. Um, you can have the same reasoning behind uh, loud noises. You can put uh, earphones or earmuffs in. Uh, to try to block out any loud noises to help you sleep. Uh, there are chemical ways to help you sleep. Lots of different possibilities um, for both why you would want to fall asleep and why you wouldn't want to fall asleep at certain times. So factors to consider. For now though, let's talk about our pair of socks. So we looted a pair of socks. We have that extra pair. We're just going to turn the pair of socks into sock mitts. And you can see here a pair of improvised gloves made from socks with holes poked through them going to provide us 40% coverage on our hands. I'm not going to get into the coverages and inventory layering quite yet. That's a longer conversation we're going to have when it's uh, got a few more factors involved. But it provides us five warmth for our hands. So that's going to help keep our hands a little bit warmer. Hopefully keep the chill from setting in and giving us any negative modifiers. And you can see here difficulty zero. Our skill level is two. It only takes one minute and so it should be easily craftable. So we're going to hit enter. You can see that we have successfully created a pair of sock mitts that fit. Another thing to note is any uh, armor and clothing that you craft yourself will always have the fits modifier. So you'll always get the benefit of the lowered encumbrance value for crafted items. So that's always a benefit. Next we're going to do Shift W or capital W to wear. And it's asking us what do we want to wear. And we're going to wear our pair of sock mitts. And we are now wearing them. So if I open my inventory up, we can see here that at the bottom of the list it is now added pair of sock mitts that fit. Great. So we've got some things on our hands now. Hopefully that's going to be enough to get our chilly condition removed. It might not be. Those sock mitts aren't the best in the world. Uh, I just noticed up here, uh, you always want to pay attention to this screen and glance at it pretty regularly. We did take that one point of damage to our torso. That's where we got bit by that zombie the one time. He didn't manage to infect us, but he did do some damage. You will heal naturally when you go to sleep, as long as you are in a fairly comfortable condition or position when you go to sleep. And I'll show you how to set up uh, an area to sleep in here in a bit. But... Uh, there are other ways to heal up through medications and first aid kits and so on, but that small amount of damage is nothing that we're going to worry about for now. My only concern was whether we got infected. So we're trying to get rid of the pain condition. Hungry and very thirsty. Let's get rid of those. So that's why I kept a hold of those uh, the jar of pickled vegetables. We're going to eat the jar of vegetables and we're going to drink some of our water to try to mitigate these negative conditions because they are giving us some uh, malices to our statistics. So we're going to hit Shift E or capital E and that brings up a consume item or eat menu and it's only going to show me things that I can eat. You'll notice here that I've got another category and at the top of this right hand category it says floor 1 in. That means on the floor, one space north of us, these are the items that it found that meet our consume something condition. So we could eat our bird eggs, our mugwort, mild vegetables. Not a good idea to eat these things without them being processed or cooked in some way, especially the wild vegetables. You'll get some bad uh, bugs if you try to eat wild vegetables just flat out raw without cooking them in some way. Uh, the bird eggs, you also want to do some kind of cooking You'll notice it has a spoils in message over here. I mentioned in a previous episode that food does have a spoiling factor or time frame. So once you have looted or put them in your inventory, that countdown starts. So we can't just let the wild vegetables sit around. They only have a three day hold time. Once that three days expires, they're going to start to go bad. And then anything in gray indicates that it is a preserved item. There's no spoilage necessary or to worry about. So tin cans of food are always going to be this way. Uh, most of the things in bags and boxes, dry goods and so on will be this way. But anything you harvest fresh from the, the world, whether it's butchering uh, animals you've hunted for meat or vegetables that you've picked out in the, the world, you're going to have to do something with or you're going to have to worry about them going bad. It shows nutritional values, quench values for thirst, 
and then happiness values. So none of these things are going to make me particularly happy. Munching on wild vegetables I've just dug up from the ground is not going to make me happy. It's actually going to make me unhappy. So other things to consider. So we're not going to worry about this side. Uh, although we might take we might eat that tin canned uh, tomato there. But uh, for now, we're just going to work on these. So I'm going to tell it to consume G, which is our bottle of clean water. And you'll notice our very thirsty condition over here has now changed to just plain thirsty. We're going to consume again. And I'm going to go ahead and consume there. And now we are slaked. That is the best condition for your thirst. That means you are completely full of uh, liquid and you have no thirst to worry about. That will slowly tick away until it turns into a thirsty condition and starts working down the bad side again. But that'll take care of us for a good while. And you'll notice in our inventory after we did that, it returned the plastic bottle to us. So we've still got the bottle and we can fill that up with water or any other liquid so that we can uh, get that boiled and eaten or drunk. So we're going to do the same thing with the jar of pickled veggies. We're going to get that jar back once we finish eating. So let's eat our veggies. We're at hungry. Eat our veggies. And we got rid of the hungry status. It didn't quite get us to satiated, which is the same as slaked. It means the we're completely full and it's not wise to eat any further. But that's good enough for now. And you'll notice now we have under other category a glass jar and a bottle. All right. You need a lot of containers, especially early on. One of the best things you can find, and what I hope to find in the first house or two I go to, is gallon jugs of things, whether it's uh, jugs of milk in the refrigerator or ammonia or bleach in the uh, bathroom or utility rooms. Uh, gallon jugs are really valuable, both for holding liquids and for using whatever their current contents are. Um, so we've taken care of those conditions, freed up some uh, volume carrying goods in our inventory. And let's take a look at our character sheet. So the pain will go away naturally over a little bit of time. We're not worried about that. Cold and hot, hopefully it will also mitigate. Uh, although our hot feet, I'm not going to do too much about. If I hit tab a few times to get to this effects column, you can actually see exactly what that condition is causing. So because of our chilly hand, we're getting a speed minus two malice. Because of the constant pain in our feet, we're getting the same condition. So chilly and warm are giving us the same negative effect, basically. So unhappy is not doing anything at the moment. And the pain status by itself is lowering our intelligence by one and also our speed by one percent. So you can see why it's important to keep an eye on these and to know what's causing them, how to get rid of them, and try to keep yourself on the good side of the bonus versus malice categories. All right. So next up, we're going to go ahead and get some more things done. So I was moving inventory items around. We freed up some space. Let's go grab some of these items that we earlier, oops, we spotted a black rat nearby. I'm going to turn off safe mode. All right, I'm going to use the advanced inventory screen. That's going to bring up the list. Again, it remembered my previous settings. It's showing me all on this category and it's showing my personal inventory here. We can pick up a pretty good amount of this with uh, into our personal inventory with our new volume that we've got. The 2x4s have quite a bit of volume on them, so we might not be able to grab all of those. And the rags have a bit. The sheets are the worst, but there's only one of those. So we're going to come pretty close, I think, be able to grab most of this. So I'm just going to hit Shift-M a few times, and we're going to grab all this stuff from around us. All right, the black rat was spotted again. Stop interacting with inventory. I'm going to say no. Let's do this. Let's go. Oh, we can't close that. I forgot we destroyed that, so we're just going to have to suffer through that. So back to here, and we'll just keep picking things up. I'm going to save the sheet for last. We'll pick the rest of this stuff up. Oh, destination's full. So we couldn't quite get the sheet, but that's fine. We're just going to bring most of this over here, drop it into our pile of things we can craft with. So all of this is going in there. I'm actually going to pull the thread out and put that in a separate pile. Splintered wood can go in there. We're going to drop the thread up with our tools. It's just a more appropriate area. All right, we'll come back over here. We'll grab the sheet. We're going to go ahead and grab these now, and I'm going to wield the crowbar again, smash away at that, pick those items up. I'm also going to smash up a couple more benches while I'm over here. Oops. 
an NPC standing on one of my benches, but that's all right. I'm going to use... No, so we don't have enough for that, so let's just pick these up. All right, ran out again. We'll drop these off. off enough. What else is causing that? So we'll do that. We'll do that. Oh yeah, we got that sheet. And a heavy stick and a rock. Alright, that got our weight back down. Uh, emergency jacket and the pair of socks that fit. I'm not sure why it took off our socks earlier. Interesting. Alright, however. Okay. So the bottle and that emergency jacket's causing a little bit of weight. It's uh, It's got some weight and volume, so we need to dump that. We're going to actually drop that over here next to this window. Not something I'll use in crafting, but it'll remind me that it's over there. Alright, we'll grab the rest of these. And I think that'll do it for the moment. Finish dropping this off, and... Alright, we're good to go. So... While I'm over here, I'm going to go ahead and examine this, tear the curtains down, and I'm going to grab all that material as well. Okay... Okay, so we've got a pretty good supply of raw materials. Got our tools. And our food pile up there. Let's pick up our stone hammer, drop it on the tool pile. Actually, we'll carry it with us for the moment. All right, now, we've got everything located here. What we're going to do is a new thing. There's another menu for crafting things. It's the construction menu. It's Shift-8 or the, uh, I believe, asterisk key. And this is for building structures more than it is crafting items that you use. So this is the all listing of the menu system. If you arrow to the right or left, you'll go through the various tabs uh, or that are available or breakdowns of the sections. This is constructions, furniture, digging and mining, repairing things, reinforcing things, decorative, farming and woodcutting, and others. One of the common things you'll come here to others for is start vehicle construction. Yes, you can build your own apocalypse death mobile. You can also use the vehicle construction screen to actually build internal bases inside your uh, for, inside your buildings uh, to set up various cool things, which I'll show you in a later episode. It'll be a little while before we get to that part of it. Although we're going to build something here soon that uh, is very useful early game as well. All right, whoops, back to that menu. And we're gonna go to the construction part of it, or actually the furniture section. So a number of interesting things in here. You can build beds, a makeshift bed, which is going to be important. Notice here the requirements. So it's gonna take 45 minutes to build a bed. It takes a tool with hammering, we've got that, and we've got the raw materials. So this is important for a few reasons. Um, when you try to sleep, in order to sleep comfortably and get a well-rested sleep that improves your condition and your stats, you're going to want to be sleeping on a bed, preferably with some blankets and pillows and things to keep you warm, and uh, we don't have anything like that. Right now, if I tried to sleep, I'd be sleeping on a cold floor somewhere, um, which isn't the best. So we have the ability to do that, but we're going to hold off on that for the moment. If we look further down the list, there's a regular bed, which we're missing a bunch of things for, not least of which is the skill, fabrication of four and tailoring of four. We're not there yet. Um, but the thing I want to point out is a little further down. A stone fireplace is similar to the brazier that we're about to build. All it takes is a tool with hammering and a tool with digging, as well as 40 rocks. And if you go out into the uh, outside area there and just hunt up 40 rocks, Get yourself a shovel and a hammer you can put together a stone fireplace which you can also use to uh, cook safely and to burn uh, wood safely a wood stove a fermenting vat wooden keg standing tanks all of these things are very useful these are crafted elsewhere and then placed using this menu system 
charcoal kiln. Uh, we had found that charcoal smoker last episode and this is what we would build in order to actually process wood into charcoal so that we could have fuel for our charcoal kiln or for our charcoal smoker I mean. Um, so that's something we're going to get around to. Again it takes just a shovel and some rocks. We've already got the hammer but we're short on the fabrication skill so we need to get our skill up in fabrication before we can do that one. So a lot of good things here. Actually uh, the brazier I forgot is actually built in the regular crafting menu, so I'm back here. We're going to do F for search or find brazier, and we meet all the requirements. It's skill 1 versus our skill 2, so we should be good to go, and you craft the brazier. Great. So now we have a brazier in our inventory right here, and large metal stand with slots on the sides. Use it to place it somewhere, then set fires in it with no risk of spreading. That's the important part no risk of spreading. So, what we're going to do is hit the apply button, or A for apply. We're going to pick the brazier. You notice it automatically knows that the action that is assumed for that object is the place command. So we hit that, and it's saying place brazier where. Now we just press a number key on the numeric keypad to tell it which direction. I'm going to put the brazier right here next to the door, so I'm going to hit number seven, and we now have a brazier in that location. So it says here you place the brazier securely. Great, so we've got a brazier. Now what? Well, if we go to our pile of raw materials, let's pull out the heavy stick and two 2x4s. Two and I'm going to drop those right here in front of the brazier. Alright, so basically this is my wood pile that I'm going to feed into the brazier when I want to light a fire. I don't need to light a fire at the moment. I have no use for it currently, but we're all set for the night time now. So wood burns at different uh, rates and different time frames. So you want to have a pretty good supply of wood when you're going to go into the night time so you can keep feeding the brazier as necessary. I'm only going to use it when I'm cooking or uh, things like that or need it for a crafting recipe of some kind in the cooking menu. Uh, otherwise, I'll most likely just stand over next to the computer if I'm reading books or doing anything that needs any kind of a light source during the evening. All right, so we've got our sustained fire source ready to go. Uh, anytime we need to, we can just pop the wood in there use one of our lighters or matches to light the fire and it'll burn for a while and we can craft uh, food items. So that'll also help keep us warm if we get overly cold. All right so we got our inventory piles sorted out. We've got our brazier built. Uh, next thing I want to do is probably let's check our time frame. Sun's going down. We've lost some more time building and such so that's an important consideration. If we check our map cleared the building, we dealt with the zombies that came around when we were playing near the minefield. Hmm. I think during the night time we might be able to make that foray around and go all the way around and try to get into the fire station. Nighttime zombies have much more limited visual range and I've got night vision so it's a lot easier to sneak around and to get away from zombies. Um, Hmm. We're not sleepy yet, so we don't have to worry about that. The one thing I am worried about is we need to refill our water supply as well as get something to eat. We now have almost nothing to eat other than those wild items that we picked up, and we can't do a bunch with those quite yet. So... Let's do this. I'm going to move my food pile, actually. We're going to set the left-hand side of the screen to the number 4, the right-hand side to the number 6. So this is my food pile. This is the pile next to the brazier, and I'm going to move my food over next to the brazier. So I'm just going to hit the uh, apostrophe key. That will tell it to transfer everything over. Alright, so that way if when I go to cook something at the brazier, it needs to be within a certain range. I believe it's two spaces in order for it to pull materials automatically from close enough. So that's a better position for that. Alright, let's do this. Hmm. Check our condition again. Alright, our cold hands have finally settled down, so that's good. We could always take our socks off. That would take care of the warm condition. Let's do that. Let's take off 
our pair of socks. And we'll just drop those over here for now. Later, if our, we see our feet getting cold, we'll uh, put them back on again. Alright, we're all geared up. Let's do this. I'm going to put a cut in right here before we actually move out. We did a lot of explaining them, some inventory items and some buildings, so I don't want to go too long with this particular episode. Next episode, we're going to get some action in. We're going to go ahead and try to make one more quick run into town before the sun goes down completely, and then we'll make a uh, better strategy for a nighttime visit and hopefully get a little more accomplished. We need to find some food and some liquid and hopefully some more containers. Uh, I'm going to hit those houses near the minefield, I think. That's the safest thing to do. And uh, we know that area is somewhat clean. And especially as if at night goes down, we'll have a much better way of sneaking around. So uh, let's go ahead and end the video right here. Appreciate you visiting and I hope you're enjoying the series. If you do, please give it a like and uh, hopefully subscribe. I've got a lot more coming, so we'll see you on the next episode. Have a good day.